So I've been interested in these uh, microphone preamplifiers. And uh, here's one. Uh, I don't remember what amplifier this is out of. But uh, there's an input, and the way these microphones work is there's a shield, shielded cable with two wires inside. And so it's a differential pair. So the signal is brought out as a plus minus, and it's shielded. Now the reason that you have a, a shield is to keep noise out. And the reason that you have a differential pair is to keep noise the same between the two differential pairs. So if you have two wires, and they move together, the voltage across the two wires is always the same. So if your noise, let's say you have a 60 hertz noise and it's moving up and down, and then uh, you have no input, you still have the same voltage across these two wires. But if the two wires move, then the differential voltage changes. So you can imagine the audio signal is the voltage between the two wires and the noise is the same in the two wires. So if you can always measure the difference between the two wires, you can cancel out the noise. So that's the whole thing of these preamplifiers. So you always have one signal coming in one side and one signal coming in the other side. And then they go into an amplifier that takes the difference of those two signals. And it's very good at what's called common mode noise rejection. And it gets rid of those things that are common to both signals and amplifies the difference between those two signals. Now there's a bunch of stuff that happens on before you get to this amplifier, but what I wanted to talk about today is this amplifier. It's usually called a differential amplifier or an instrumentation amplifier. So this is an SSM 2017. Uh, this was a popular chip. This is an IC that kind of does all the magic. This was popular in some of the more expensive um, amplifiers. And I don't think it's built anymore, but there is a replacement, and we'll get to that in a later video, but there is a replacement for this chip. Um, but I want to talk about instrumentation amplifiers or difference amplifiers. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So, so the first thing is, can I zoom in further? Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is um, we need a difference amplifiers. We need to measure the difference between these two voltages. And so we can use an op amp with four resistors. And the way that this works is remember we have a plus and minus, we have this teeter totter and um, we, we need them to, to be the same um, or it's measuring the difference. If the teeter totter is off, off center, that's the difference between the two. Um, so if you take a look at the circuit and all these resistors are exactly the same value, the output will be voltage 2 minus voltage 1. Voltage 2 is going into the plus input. Voltage 1 is going into the minus. So you get voltage 1 minus vol voltage 2 minus voltage 1. So this is called a difference amplifier. Now you can do this with any op amp. But one of the problems with this circuit is the input impedance. So um, a lot of times you want to have the measuring device not affect the measurement. So back in the old days when you had um, um, uh, what were called analog voltmeters, they were just a resistive divider that went into a, uh, a meter. And they might have 20k ohms per volt uh, input impedance, something like that. And that was sometimes quite too high. So they, they came up with vacuum tube voltmeters, and vacuum tube voltmeters had a very, very high input impedance um, so that the measuring device didn't affect the circuit. These days they use a, a JFET input um, that has a very, very high input impedance. Um, so that's what you want. You don't want your device affecting the measurement. So this would, this has input impedance, you know. It, its input impedance would be, would be 2R. Um, and that might be quite a bit. And so you want to be able to buffer that from your measurement. So exactly what I just said, buffer, you could put two buffers on the input. So if these are JFET input op amps, these might have, you know, 50 meg ohms of input impedance or something ridiculous. And uh, if, you, if you had a very expensive op amp, but certainly in the meg ohms um, of input impedance would be very similar um, for, for a generic JFET input 
op amp. So you could just buffer the two voltages first. So you have very high input impedances, and then the output can then drive the differential amplifier. So you could do something like this. So again, we would have V2 minus V1 on the output. But what if we wanted to add gain to this circuit? We could, we could change these values. We could, we could increase this R and increase this R, and um, that would make gain in the, in the circuit. Um, we could also put the gain out in the front. So since these are non-inverting uh, op-amp circuits, you know, we've seen these before, um, we could create gain in the V1 stage and gain in the V2 stage. And the gain would just be um, R1 divided by R2 and uh, 1 plus uh, R1 divided by R2. And so the output then is V2 minus V1 times the gain of one of the stages, uh, 1 plus R1 over R2. Or another way of looking at it is it's uh, R, R1 plus R2 divided by R2. So the total resistance divided by the smaller resistor. That's the gain. Right. So uh, is there a, a, a different way we can think about this circuit? Um, we could take this. All we're going to do is we're going to draw it differently. We're going to take this one and I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm just going to flip it up. I'm going to, R2 will now be on the top, R1 will be at the bottom, but the circle will stay exactly the same. So that's, that's all I've done here. Um, these two circuits are exactly the same. I've just turned one upside down. And this ground and this ground are the same ground, so I'm just going to draw them in the middle. So all I've done is pen and paper. No electronics, just pen and paper. Um, we've just drawn it a different way. So again, the output is exactly the same, 1 plus R1 over R2. Exactly the same. We just drew it a different way. But if we start thinking about it, we say, hmm, what if I take out this ground? What, what happens when I take out this ground? If, if this thing is taking the difference between these two, and R1 equals R1 and R2 equals R2, then this is the center point between these two. This is the exact center. Um, so isn't the exact center exactly what we want on the output? Isn't that basically zero? And you can kind of convince yourself that mm, does it really matter if I reference it to ground or can I reference it to something else? Is it still going to give me the same gain? Um, so you can convince yourself that if I remove that ground and I end up with this circuit, I have R3, not to confuse things, I label it a different thing. Um, I used to have R1 and R2. And R2 was just half of R3, and then there was ground. And then on the other side, we'd had R2 and ground. So R3 is just R2 plus R2. And um, so if we take a look at our circuit, remember the voltage gain was 1 plus R1 over R2. But since R3 is 2 times R2, then it's just 1 plus R1 over R3 divided by 2. So R3 divided by 2 was our old R2. So it's R3 divided by 2. And then just simple arithmetic, the 2 comes up, and so we just rewrite it 1 plus 2 R1 over R3. And this is the equation for an instrumentation amplifier. So this is an instrumentation amplifier. It has a couple of good things going for it. One is that it's very high input impedance. And the next thing is you only have to change one resistor in order for you to change the gain. And so you could make this a variable resistor and you could set the gain of this without having to change two resistors together. You could just change one resistor. And that makes it very easy to put in things like gain control on a microphone preamp. You just have to vary this one resistor.